welcome back to the Wrestling Newsroom. I'm your host, Orthin Dresson, and today we're going to look at all the wrestling news from Monday. We start with the list of names that are currently scheduled for Raw 25th anniversary. The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Jim Ross, Jerry Lawler, X Pac, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Asuka, Braun Strowman, Alexa Bliss, Samoa Joe, Sheamus, Cesaro, Kane, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and Jinder Mahal. Weird to know that a a Dean Ambrose is currently scheduled for that. Hmm, who knows what's going to happen over that with his injury. It's interesting to note that yet, as of yet, Austin, Rock and Hogan have not been announced, but uh, heavily speculated. I think they'll be back. Either way, it's going to be a fantastic event. Then we go to the news that TNA Impact star um, Sanjay Dove revealed on Twitter that he's having surgery to repair his torn right Achille, Achilles. He said, starting off my 18th year in pro wrestling the wrong way my first surgery related today to fix my right tour achilles thank god i'm alive and will be fixed 100 percent. a bet talking a while back be safe everyone even planting your foot can be dangerous best of luck on your recovery sanjay dud we hope to see you in the back end of 2018 uh, and then there's current speculation that WWE has given up on pushing bailey on christmas day she took the fall in a six woman match that included mickey james this is considered a bad sign for Bailey since James was brought back in a role in WWE to help put over other talents. <sighs> Damn it. This is WWE's failed project. Um, and then we go to Mick Foley talked about his first WWE title win on Monday Night Raw, January 4th, 1999. It meant so much to me on a personal level and I think I'm right to say that fans have voted it as the best ever Raw moment. He said, I'm excited to have been a part of so many big matches on Raw, but I saw me as a champion as a mistake. I didn't think it was a good idea. I always thought the challenger should be chasing the champion. The Rock was a great champion. Um, damn it. Uh, crap, I accidentally closed that. Um, but it turned out to be the best thing for everyone. We were going up against a massive live WCW show at the Georgia Dome in front of 40,000 people and no one thought we'd be celebrating a big victory that night. It was not seen as a big moment at the time. I saw it as a big moment for myself because I never dreamed of being champion, but we all thought it would have been an exciting conclusion to a good show. We didn't realise that the focus force on the show until the ratings were revealed the next day. Exactly, you had like literally 500,000 people changed from WCW that day. It was amazing. And Christy Hemi announced on Twitter that she gave birth to quadruplets and the procedure went wow. So all of her babies are safe. That's absolutely amazing. Mike Canellis responds to a fan that labelled him as a failure. Since uh, since signing with WWE, he got clean, brought a house and have a baby on the way. I want to be a failure all the time. And then said, so you got Cody Rhodes who left an easy job because he wanted to achieve more as a wrestler. And you got Mike Bennett who signed with WWE and be happy to meet a jobber who doesn't even appear on TVA after two weeks. I guess some people care about wrestling and some just the money. And he went, you've proven, you've mistaken positivity for content. I turn my negative into motivation. I don't wrestle for 16 years all around the world for four major companies by being content. I work hard and every negative I work harder. I just don't bitch about what I don't have. I just work, go work for it. Absolutely fantastic, Mike. You've got a positive mindset and I'm so glad that you've got clean and you've got your life together. I'm so happy for you, mate. I cannot wait to see you get back on TV because you are fantastic. Uh, and then we go to... This has got to be... I'm, I'm, I'm... No, that, that one was... Uh, Just Incredible did a recent interview with the New York Post. And here's a few highlights. I'm not watching the video of his drunk in-ring program. I won't see it. It's not something I'm going to uplift is going to uplift me. I'm trying not to do negative things. I probably can imagine what I was like. On knowing you can't be can't have any more relapse. This time it's no brainers and no choice because I can't drink. I need to be sober or else I will die. It's one of those situations. I'm apologizing for the incident. Being buzzed, drunk, whatever, it don't make you don't make the right calls. It was my intention to work something cool off it, but especially with the young kids who aren't experience they didn't know how to react and these promoters are not experienced so they didn't know how to react it just ended up being something more than it really was not to demean it or downplay it. i definitely did what i did it's a big deal for me because i drank well at least he's acknowledging what he's done he's trying to get better we believe in you just incredible you can come back better stronger and overall a much healthier and happier man 
best of luck, just incredible. We'll keep updated on your situation. And after suffering from the flu and being pulled from last week's Raw, Enzo More has been medically cleared to wrestle again. His match with uh, Cedric Alexander for the title will take place on this week's Raw. That's good. I cannot wait to see how they do that match and if he's going to lose it. Oh, and Strowman revealed his favourite thing about WWE in an interview with ESPN's radio's Dean J and J show. Um, when it comes to the kids, I always have time for them. Uh, literally, this is my favourite part of being a WWE superstar is the influence that we have with the little ones. Just seeing their face walking around the arena. Now that per se, I'm more liked by the crowd and most, and almost a good guy. Just on my way to the ring, high fiving the kids. Just looking at their faces I mean it's really, really special. There's so many opportunities to open kids' eyes to show them then the window of things that they're not used to seeing. Just a little split second of when I stop on my time and just give them a handshake or a high five. And just, in my opinion, leaves a lasting impression. At the end of the day, it's the best part about it all. Well, you sound like an absolutely incredible guy, Braun Strowman. You really do. Outside of your character, you're all apparently one of the most loveliest people ever. <clears throat> And the current speculation that WWE is considering having a Daniel Bryan heel turn as a way to call off his popularity if he leaves the company once his contract expires in the fall. At the time, Daniel Bryan's storyline with Shane McMahon is reportedly not leading to a match with Bryan wrestling. Bryan still hasn't been cleared to wrestle and the belief is he won't, get signed, he won't sign a new contract unless the WWE doctors clear him. I can kind of see that. And then, as previously noted, Chris Hemi gave birth to quadruplets. She posted a lovely picture on social media, which I'm just going to show you this way. That is not going to show up on camera, is it? Nope, not a way in hell. That is not. There you go, focus. There you go. Um, she said, Welcome to my world, my sweet Hemi, Jagger, Quinn, and Sunny. You're so loved. I will forever change my journey you've taken me on, and I'm excited to continue growing with you, my loves. Oh, that's absolutely adorable. Best, best of luck with your kids, Christy Hemi. You are fantastic. And I have no doubt that you'll be an amazing mother. Um, and then... Um, where is it? Uh, oh. Um, Tyus O'Neill calls out clothing company H&M over a recent marketing campaign. Um, okay, it says, Enduring stereotypes, degrading images of African Americans re remained in... An accepted part of American culture in the years after World War Two, stereotypical images enable where they discover. It. Okay, it's basically talking about stereotypes. He said, "Your company just failed miserably, but I'm sure many of you will say. Uh, but I'm sure many will just say all oh, this will blow over, and it will because hey, when it comes to the case of racial profiling and stereotyping and sexual assaults to men and women in the workplace, it does blow over, right? Hashtag shame." Damn. Damn, damn, damn. You got called out. Well, as the course of racial things, I'm just going to stay straight out of it. Okay. Um, and then the latest on Neville and WWE is that he is still under contract to the company, but talks between the two sides have completely died down. WWE decided not to grant Neville a release, and he'll be waiting until his contract expires before he can work for another promotion. There is no word on yet whether his contract will be up. Then we go on to our last story. Current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Will Ospreay is scheduled to face WWE United Kingdom Champion Pete Dunne in an upcoming IPW show January 17th in Milton Keynes. Ospreay noted the following about the match. How's this? Wednesday 17th annual match I take on Pete Dunne. It will be the first time an IWGP Champion will take on a WWE Champion since his Hogan vs Muta. Funny story is me and Pete weren't even born when this match had happened. This could be a one-time only thing and get it to... Get to it at IPW UK. Making history again. Will Ospreay. That was an amazing match with Will Ospreay, um, Marty Skrull and the other two wrestlers. I'm sorry, I don't know Japanese wrestlers. Apart from Naito. Uh, I know a couple of Japanese wrestlers. We're not going to go into the Japanese wrestlers I know. But yeah, absolutely amazing. That match will be fantastic. I'm guaranteeing it you. I will try and check that out and let you know what I think of it. Now that has been the Wrestling Newsroom. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give this video a like. Please support me on Patreon. Link in the description below. Subscribe to my content and I'll catch you later.